everybody. How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing today? Hello. Hi. Hi. So, okay. Well, look, here we go. All right. I got to rearrange my camera here so that we're both in frame. Uh, uh, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm very good. So uh, let me uh, let me give a, a little introduction here for everybody. Uh, sorry, this is my first time doing one of these. So uh, I'm a, I'm a recent uh, I'm a newcomer to this uh, Go Changemaker thing. So I, I've joined Go Campaign this year to uh, help bring awareness to things that people people uh, are way cooler than me are doing. And uh, I'm here today. Is it uh, Julia Weissen? Julia Weissen, yes. Weissen. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I've got the pronunciation right. So and um, so she is the. Uh, well, the head of the uh, Shakespeare Youth Festival here in Los Angeles, uh, working with uh, with kids and teaching Shakespeare. And uh, why, why don't you, um, I, I'm going to give you the floor because uh, uh, you can tell us about what you do here. Okay. Um, my name is Julia Weissen. I'm the executive director of the Shakespeare Youth Festival. And along with my partner, Blair Barron, who's the founder of the organization, uh, we have been spending the last 15 years running the country's youngest Shakespeare troupe. And we work Very with cool. kids all over Los Angeles and actually all over the world, thanks to Go Campaign. Um, and we basically, Shakespeare is the vehicle. Shakespeare mm -hmm. is the vehicle through which we create creative communities of belonging and empowerment mm -hmm. and literacy and critical thinking. And we, uh, anybody who's been involved in a play knows that there's this, this uh, hyper-focused, you know, the relationships are more intense and the feelings are more intense. And, and it's this, uh, mm. this sort of high, high powered experience. And when you give that to kids, it's life changing for them. They, they discover strengths they didn't have, they didn't know they have, they make lifelong friends, they, uh, they charge their brains in amazing ways. And that's kind of what we do. <laughs> so, so this is interesting because I used to I used to help teach uh, Shakespeare camps to young kids. Uh, so mm -hmm. I saw firsthand um, what it meant to these kids. And admittedly, a lot of these kids were fairly privileged children who could afford to do these things. Um, so uh, I, I take it that you're serving primarily people who might not otherwise be able to do this, or is it everybody? It's what's one of the things. Oops. Okay. Do I got to do one thing? I just realized one thing. I don't want to lose my battery and my my charger is okay. not. So I'm gonna charge. I'm gonna connect. You got it. I'll keep. I'll keep people occupied. How you guys doing out there? Thank you so much, Sky Ready. Thank you. Thank you for all the the heart emojis. Thank you, Jung Kuki. Hello, Italy. Hello. Uh... My sincere yeah. apologies. I thought <laughs> I had all my boxes ticked. And that was the you're, one box I didn't have ticked, so I'm gonna fix you're that. You're fine. This is this is this is the joy of doing it live. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Roll with the punches. Roll with the punches. Okay. It's not a live if there isn't at least one scream followed by a camera drop. That's how we do it here. Um, exactly. So, uh, so, exactly. So I guess just for people who aren't familiar, Go Campaign, their thing is to find people who are already making a difference and then to give them. Um, a, a additional funding and support to try and uh, expand on the program that already exists. And is, is it fair to say? So, um, has uh, so uh, what has Go Campaign done for you specifically? Well, that you know, I was actually thinking about that a lot, kind of preparing for this. And um, they've done, they've really done like three things for us that have been pretty organization changing. The first thing, obviously, there's the funding. There's the funding mm -hmm. um, aspect. You know, the fact that if you have any experience in the nonprofit world, you spend most of your life trying to convince people that what you're doing is worthwhile and that they should give you money to do it. Right. And That's with a lot of camp, that first part is taken care of because they already have recognized the value. So what ends up happening is I, um, I will get together with Michelle or Amy or one of the Go Campaign people and we'll talk about, you know, we'll just talk about what's going on. And then, um, for instance, uh, Michelle, we were having this lovely coffee and I was telling her about this person that I'd met who, um, who was working with a company called Upward Bound House and it helps families who are transitioning out of homelessness. Okay. And we were, I was kind of just telling Michelle about some of the conversation we'd had. Michelle was like, well, what would you need from us? 
and what is it that you want to do? And I said, we want to do a spring break program. So these kids, you know, when a home, if a family is struggling with homelessness um, and it's spring break, what do the kids do for a week? The kids are, are you know, they, there's no resources. So we wanted to come and do a program. And Michelle said, that sounds great. Uh, here, fill out these forms. And the next thing I knew, it was, uh, it was funded by Go Campaign. Wow, okay. So, and we spent a week working with these kids um, in two locations um, and had just an extraordinary experience doing it. And it was so, they simplified it. They, they take out so much of the, the middle area that you have to deal with. So, so it's, the, it's the funding, obviously. I mean, anybody, right. yeah. obviously, money, money, money. <laughs> but, yeah. but then the other thing that Go Campaign does is they, uh, they do a, these capacity building workshops. My expertise is working with kids and Shakespeare. Right. It's not running a nonprofit. And I'm doing right. it by default. <laughs> You know, because yeah. I'm and, and my partner and I are, are kind of, you know, for the last 15 years, we've been learning on the job. And one of the amazing things that Go Campaign has given us is education. They mm -hmm. they bring in experts and they have capacity building workshops that help us run our organization more effectively. And right, so that's okay. been incredibly invaluable. And then the third amazing thing, this like, which led to one of the most experience, amazing experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, they make connections with people. So Scott is traveling all over the world. He knows yeah. people everywhere. And he, um, he, he sees he and Michelle and all the people that work for go campaign see this person and this person, that's there's something that could happen between the two of them that would that would could be magic so a couple of years ago scott was met a woman who was telling him about her foundation um long story short the next thing we knew we had met this amazing organization in kenya called the sauti ku foundation run okay. by dr alma obama um and they invited us to come and teach uh, Shakespeare to their their youth for this special summer camp they do every year. So because of Go Campaigns, because of Scott going, hey, she's looking for an American theater company. I know an American theater company. Yeah. Wow, their mission is exactly the same. Their mission is completely in alignment. Let me connect them. And the next thing we knew, we took four of our teachers and four of our students to Kenya and and spent a week oh. um, working with the kids, which was extraordinary. So how did you find the kids uh, in Kenya responded to Shakespeare? That seems interesting. Oh, it was amazing. It was extraordinary. Um, we did, the way we teach Shakespeare is, it's, it's very irreverent and kinetic and mm. non-stuffy and... As it should be, honestly, in his time. He, it was not exactly. uh, highbrow even in his time. It should never be highbrow. No. So for us, it was, you know, we, we started out with a lot of movement. We started out with a lot of... Um, I do a lot of uh, Laban effort shape work, if you want to get technical and theatery about it. Oh, I love um, that. And we, so we, I, I had somebody, my first day there, I had somebody help translate all the Laban effort shape words into Luo, the native language of these kids. And okay. then the first day we just started exploring the shapes and the efforts and the movements and the kids were just gyrating all over the, um, the uh, field. And they, there is such a wonderful tradition of dance and movement and physical activity in Kenya. Of course, yeah. So, you know, we didn't have to deal with yanking them off their devices. So it right. was just, um, you know, it was just these kids who were ready to move. And we're, you know, we're just tossing new ideas of movement on them. Um, and then we each, each one of the teachers had taken a different part. We decided we were going to explore Hamlet with them. Mm -hmm. And each one of the teachers had taken a different component of the play. Uh, Blair, my partner, took the moment where Hamlet sees his father's ghost. Uh, mm -hmm. I took the fight between um, Hamlet and uh, his mother. Um, uh, Estras, another one of our teaching artists, took the big, the final Laertes Hamlet duel. Um, Bailey, another of our teacher artists, took to be or not to be. And the kids, he was working with the older kids, and the kids took the speech to be or not to be. And they, they talked about it and they related it to their own lives. 
And then they created this sort of rhythmic experience of, uh, you know, it started out with be to be or not to be, that is the question, to be or not to be, that is the question. And they were chanting it. And then mm. by the end, by the time they'd sort of transitioned through all the, all the ways that they related to it, the final was to be or not to be, we know the answer, to be or not to be, we know the answer. And, you know, mm. so they took the language and they just completely made it their own. And um, that kind of happened with all of the different, we basically created applied theater um, pieces for each of right, these. Right, so they, they remixed it, if you will. Exactly, exactly. Right. Sample so what Shakespeare. Are, you mentioned some of the older kids. So um, what are the age ranges that you work with then? Um, in, our, in our stateside program, we uh, generally, and this was what it was in Kenya too, but uh, generally seven is mm -hmm. our youngest age and up through 18, 17, 18. Right. And I remember when I was working with the little ones, I was startled sometimes. You come across seven-year-olds sometimes who have a better command of the text that, than I do. And uh, it, it, it's startling hearing those words come out of a, a kid's mouth. And he seems to know exactly what he's saying, or, or yeah. she seems to know exactly what she's saying. And um, I, I remember being baffled by that, because you think of Shakespeare as being like quite um, academic. But the kids just don't see it that way, do they? No, they don't. Not at all. Um, I, I had one little, uh, one very um, precocious little girl, but they all are. Um, she was playing Touchstone mm -hmm. and she decided that she could not do uh, the, the speech about the lie seven times removed. She couldn't do the speech about the lie seven times removed until she had figured out real life instances of each one of the lies. Oh, so okay. we had this great conversation about you know, what is the lie circumstantial? What is the lie, you know, and she had all these ideas and had figured it out. And she was, con she felt that Shakespeare had mixed two of them up because she thought he was going in order of how bad they were. And she thought, that, I don't remember exactly what it was, but one of the lies was much worse than the other one. And that should have been higher up on the list than right. she had. So. Yeah, <laughs> Shakespeare got this wrong. Let me tell you how it's yeah. done. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're all they're all they're all very willing to figure out when Shakespeare gets something wrong. So, well, that's fair. You know, uh, everyone's a critic. Exactly. Um, so let me ask you, uh, how has COVID affected the work that you've been doing? Well, we the the, the beginning, we're just kind of going through all the uh, the reliving of everything as we come on the year anniversary. Mm -hmm. One year ago, we were smack in the middle. We had just launched our annual festival and we always do a festival every year, mm -hmm. three or four plays uh, in, fest in repertory. The kids are, are um, you, usually it's about 60 to 70 kids and they've all been rehearsing for, for four to six months. Yeah. And we've got these full productions uh, that, they're, that they're ready to do. And it's the high point of a lot of these kids' years. So last year, we had just opened the festival. The first two shows had had their opening weekend. And we were hearing about this virus that was coming. Yeah. But I, for one, was, was poo-pooing it. I was like, this is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, me too, honestly. Like, uh, it's SARS all over again. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's, it's fizzle out, yeah. And we had a few parents calling going, what are you thinking about the virus? And I was thinking, what do you mean? Like, we're not going to cancel the festival. These kids have been working for months. And then one night we were rehearsing for the next two plays. We had opened Twelfth Night and, um, and uh, Comedy of Errors. And we were rehearsing Measure for Measure and Troilus and Cressida. And all of a sudden it hit. And parents were saying, I don't think, you know, one, one kid, uh, his, uh, he lives with his grandparents and his mom's like, I'm not comfortable with him being in public. I don't know if I'm comfortable being with him in, in a theater this weekend. So in 24 hours, we had to make the agonizing decision to shut down and tell yeah. these kids that yeah. this play that they'd been working on for five months was not going to be produced. Wow. That we were done. And it was pretty, it was heart wrenching. It was awful. Yeah. And so we sort of took a deep breath and we realized these kids really were feeling unmoored and upset and distressed and unfocused and they were freaking out and they were trying to figure out how to do school online. And, um, 
And we started doing these drop-in classes because nobody really had the mindset where they could, we didn't know whether we were going to open back up in two, two weeks or two months or what. Yeah, no, yeah you just didn't know. Dream that it was going to be a year. So we started doing these drop-in classes there where kids didn't have to plan ahead. They could just decide that afternoon. You know what? I need to do some improv this afternoon. I'm going to show up. Yeah. And we, we did some playwriting classes. We did some improv classes. We did some character exploration classes, just, come with your favorite Shakespeare character and let's explore it for a little bit. And we did that for the first m couple months while we were all sort of getting our bearing. And then when it became clear that this was going to go on for a little while, we just said, okay, we've got to carry on. And um, we did our full summer session. We did four weeks of four, four recitals every Friday. Um, Shakespeare scenes and and right now we are in the middle of our first we're just getting ready to launch our first online festival so we've got three plays that we're rehearsing and in uh, a week from Friday the kids will start performing them for the first time wow okay well so so the so the kids are together and are able so it's not like a zoom Shakespeare but the audience will be a, a distanced audience no the kids are not together the kids are all in their bedrooms all over they're all no kidding Okay. So we are doing, no we're kidding. actually performing not on Zoom. We've been rehearsing on Zoom, but we're performing um, on a platform called OBS. It's going to be presented oh. on video. Yeah. And we are, we are just doing our best to make it as creative and fun as possible. We did have one in-person rehearsal where we, uh, we went outside. We, we went to a park. The kids all met us in a park. We were masked. Okay. And we did some videos of them frolic. We're doing one of the plays is Midsummer, so we did a lot of uh, videos of fairies frolicking in the forest. And um, but yeah, it's it's in Zoom. It's it's all online. So the kids have not well done. I mean, people just adjust, don't they? It's uh, they, they adjust exactly. I, I just want to circle back on something I just noticed. But a quick remark: I, uh, you mentioned Measure for Measure and Troilus and Cressida, and that's fascinating to me because. Uh, so often, I guess we focus on Midsummer Night's Dream as you like it, uh, kind of like the hits, you know, and that's what we give to kids. But you're saying that these kids are handling these these problematic kind of, uh, uh, or not problematic, but problem plays, we call them, or things that, yeah. that, where they're, um, um, they're imperfect scripts, let's say. Yeah. Um, or yes. lesser lesser loved ones. But uh, I, yeah. I have a special place in my heart for uh, Troilus and Cressida. So as that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, last year we did Cymbeline. So, oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, we've, we've done King John. We've done, we've done all the, we pretty much, this was going to be our first pass at measure. And I'm disappointed that it didn't get to um, come to fruition because yes. it was, uh, it was fun to work on. And it was, you know, it's there, the messy ones. I mean, you know, if you were a teen in 2021, it's messy. It's a very messy time to be a teenager. Yeah. And I think that it's a very messy time to be a human being. And I think that the kids really appreciate being able to deal with, um, uh, you know, questionable, questionable morality and people who yeah. are not good or bad and where you can't decide for sure. And they really appreciate that and they thrive on it. And they, it, it, I think it helps them to see that this person was writing about these naughty moral dilemmas for hundreds of years ago and we're still dealing with it and mm. you know it kind of makes us feel like maybe it's not as bad maybe maybe we're not doomed because it's people have been dealing with these things forever so you know i think yeah. it's comforting i i think about that sometimes every time somebody goes or i catch myself going what does the world come to i'm like i think it has always been thus you know uh, <laughs> we're been. we're a messy species Exactly. Um, so uh, let me see, is there any sort of, uh, it, do you have, and it's okay if not, but any sort of specific, uh, does anybody come to mind like a story of perhaps a kid that came in in, in, in a certain kind of way and then they got something out of this program and, and you were able to witness the, uh, the transformation, if you will, or do, I'm sure that happens all the time, but is there any one that stands out right. to you? Well, there were, there were two girls who, when they first came were so shy and and just unwilling to take a stand on you know the kind of kids where you said if would you like an oatmeal cookie or a chocolate chip cookie and they would go i don't know you know just give yeah, me this, we're so yeah. quiet 
And they, they didn't, you know, the first couple times through, you know, in our back of our minds, we're like, these aren't kids that, these kids don't seem to be theater kids. They don't seem to, which is part right. of it. We don't audition. We open our doors to any child because right. so, yeah. many kids, they haven't figured it out yet. They haven't, you know, they haven't figured out whether or not they are theater kids. So these girls were so shy and they kept coming back and they kept coming back thinking, okay, they're, they're coming back. They're obviously getting something out of it. We kept working with them and working with them and they became both of them, both of these two sisters became such powerful performers and human mm. beings. Like they came to see, they were, they were younger and they came to see the oldest kids who were doing production of Hamlet and they corner me in the lobby and they said, Miss Julia, we know what play we want to do next year. We want to do Julius Caesar. And I said, wow, okay, cool. Well, we'll think about it. Yeah. And I talked to Blair and we said, yeah, let's do Julius Caesar. That sounds great. And so I ended up playing Mark Antony, this girl who was so timid that she could barely ask for a chocolate chip cookie versus an oatmeal cookie, played Mark Antony. And she's quieter. Wow. She, of the two sisters, she's quieter, but played it with such force and honesty and straightforwardness. It was beautiful. And then her, her sister, who also was started out just as timid, played the queen in Cymbeline last year and okay. just full on diva, prancing about in these fabulous gowns, you know, toss it, just, just stunning performance. And both of them, like, I, I, I think of it as like this door that you, they push open and on one side they can't, they're 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 kind of frozen and can't speak and then the next side it's oh. oh no maintain the connection ironic though you, i think you froze right as you said the word frozen so i think there's uh there's some kind of uh energy in the the atmosphere here can you hear me Uh oh, can you? I can't. I can't hear you anymore. I'm not sure if the people at home can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh no, are we losing it? Let's see. Can you guys? Can you guys out in the world? Can you hear me? Can you hear her? Can you hear Julia? Can you, can you guys hear me? Okay. All right, we're coming back into focus, maybe. Well, we still can't hear you, we can't. Uh, we can see you. Okay, well, let's see what, let's see what happens here. So, um, I'm, I'm, Looks like she might be moving to an area of uh, perhaps better Wi-Fi. So your video is coming through clearly now, but we can't hear you for some reason, which is odd. Is there any way you got muted? Doing it live, folks. That's how we do it. Let's see. Um, well, we'll see. We'll we'll see. I, I if uh, if if we can't get it up and running again. So it's so because I can see your video now. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Because I can't hear you back. Try restarting the live. Should we try restarting it? We could. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Well, we we've dropped her out. Okay, guys. Well, I'll say hi to you. I'll I'll try inviting her back and then see what happens. Right? How you guys doing out there? So Julia is obviously a very very uh, uh, cool person. Way cooler than me. Uh, making a difference in the community. Uh, working with kids. Um, and I've seen, um, I've seen firsthand. I have seen firsthand um, what theater can do for young children, and honestly, what it did for me, and uh, what a difference it can make in confidence. And uh, am I back? You're back. We have your audio. Yes, thank goodness. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, right next to my modem. So we'll. <laughs>
Oh, no. okay. Well, I was saying, I don't know if you heard, but uh, right as you said the word frozen, it froze. So I was like, well, that's kind of uh, poetic, at least. Um, mm. At least we have that moment uh, uh, forever cemented in this live. Um, so um, I guess let's move on to um, how can people how can people help right now? Um, and uh, is there anything people can do? For example, I know a lot of us are still at home and, uh, and, and mm -hmm. can't physically be present. So maybe tell us like when this festival happens again and how people can watch uh, and, and what people well, can do to help. If they go to shakespeareyouthfestival.com, uh, they will see, the first thing they'll see is uh, some pictures from past performances and a link to all the information about the festival. It will be, uh, not this Friday, it opens not this Friday, but the following Friday. Okay. And then the, the next three weekends, it'll be three performances of each play, a Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, Pacific time. Um, the, the, watching the performances free of charge, but we invite everybody who watches and enjoys to at least donate the price of, of a theater ticket. You know, right. if, if anybody, everybody who donates watches, we want to make it available to anybody. We want you to be able to sit your whole family around. We want you to be able to sit it on your counter while you're doing the dishes, whatever it happens to be, yeah. um, whatever way you can join us and watch the work that the kids have been doing for the last couple of months is great. Um, so that's happening the next three weeks. Uh, we are also going to be doing a hybrid summer. We're going to do two weeks in the park where kids can join us in the park and see each other and s connect in cool. real life. And this is and in then, Los Angeles? This is in Los Angeles, yes. yeah. And um, so uh, anything that, the, uh, if you go to our website, you'll see the donate button up on the right. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can't, whether you can or can't join us for the actual festival, um, we uh, any money that that we take in goes obviously it's a nonprofit it goes right to the organization yeah. um a couple of things that we have in the works for next year um we're going to be working with a school in east la uh giving a theater curriculum to all their third graders and hopefully if uh, if they can fund it if we can fund it um it'll expand to fourth and fifth graders giving the kids the social emotional and literacy practice a lot of these kids come from families where english isn't spoken at home right. so english they are learning English. And so the opportunity to do, to, to participate in a theater uh, program just is so helpful in terms of sharpening their brains, connecting to this second language. Um, we're also working on putting together, uh, we're working with the LA Public Library to do um, programs in the libraries. They're right in the community. Kids can walk to the library. It's a trusted place. And so we're looking to expand our reach through these uh, through a collaboration with the library. So any donation that you are able to make goes directly toward those kinds of programs and helps us continue to present and expand on that kind of work. And, and if there's kids who are interested in getting involved in the program, can they enroll via the website? Yes. If they go to the website, we don't have our summer program up yet, but it should be up in the next week. We're still you know, everything changes every day, so we're fine tuning. But um, if anybody's interested, uh, one of the things I, I think we started talking about this earlier, but one of the things that is a hallmark for our program is that we have kids from all over Los Angeles with from every, you know, Hollywood showrunners to kids who have families are strung with, with unhoused homelessness. Um, and these kids are working together in a way that doesn't, they don't know that, they don't know that and they don't right, care. Right, that's not All in they, the conversation. Yeah, the conversation is, oh my gosh, I'm playing your father and this is what you just did and we get to have this awesome conversation on stage every night. So um, any child in Los Angeles who is interested, we don't audition, we, you know, so, so we invite any child to join. Summer is a great time to get involved because you can spend okay. a week, okay. see what you feel about it, see how you like it. And, um, you know, summer is a great get involved. Great. Okay. Well, um, I guess uh, I, I just, uh, to sort of, um, I guess, sort of close us off here, is there anything else that you want to say about the program, about yourself, about uh, uh, anything at all? Well, I do want to give out a Another uh, another shout out to Go Campaign because they really have been um, they really have been instrumental in some programs that we have uh, done and 
and I, I just love, of their hands-on approach and their, I love the idea. I'm so proud to be a local, and I love that idea so much that that they, they, they have a trust for their local trust that their local heroes know what to do, and they make it possible for us to do that. So having that trust from so great and so empowering and so helpful. And so I just, I want to give, I don't want to end without giving them another shout out because we are so grateful to their partnership. I will, I, I will echo what you said. I, I, I'm and come see the, the festival. Campaign. It's really fun. It oh yeah. Come. Oops. We had a bit of a lag there. Uh, sorry. Carry on. Hopefully. Go ahead. I'm. We're we're lagged now. So you were so campaign and. Yes. Yeah, so I, I was just lag. saying that I, I I'm. I, yes. I oh, the joy lag, of internet. But... I can't in the same room again. Yes. Exactly. So I, I'm new to go campaign, but um, uh, 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 I've met I Scott and. Um, He's a fascinating person, and um, the the concept really appeals to me of finding people who are already making a difference, who like, who already have the knowledge. Because I think sometimes we worry that when we give money to charity, they don't spend it properly. They don't know how to allocate it or how best to make use of it. Like their intentions are good, but they don't know what to do with it. So this is finding the people who've already figured out what to do with it. They just don't have enough of it. And uh, that exactly. concept really appeals to me. And, and it's not just in Los Angeles, it's, it's a worldwide charity, but, um, worldwide. but um, yeah. So uh, it's a really, really cool, um, they're, they're cool people to work with. And so far I'm extremely excited. And- uh, Great, thank so, you uh, for coming on board. Uh, maybe plug the festival one more time for everybody and, uh, and we should definitely all check it out. Shakespearefestival.com. And we will uh, be going live next Friday and uh, three, three performances of Midsummer Night's Dream, three performances of Richard III, and three performances of an original script written by my partner Blair, who um, that we call it our Shakespeare adjacent scripts that imagines what happens if, if, if 11 of, or nine of Shakespeare's characters cut from plays were trapped together in in a green room so oh, that, okay. i really encourage everybody to come and watch it. so so uh, youth original festival. work that's awesome yeah so that's shakespeare, shakespeare youth festival yes shakespeare dot youth com. festival dot, dot com all right yes well um cool. julia uh, uh, thank you so so much and um uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you and, and i i hope to to talk to you again uh, off the live and uh, uh more about what you're doing Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you. Great to meet you too. All righty. Uh, uh, and everybody at home, uh, thank you so much for your generosity and for tuning in. And um, uh, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I appreciate all the comments. Sorry, I didn't have time to read them all. <laughs> uh, well, stay safe, uh, stay sane. And uh, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you. All righty. All the best.